So I say hierarchies is another thing that a lot of people have said, you know, really, where you are today, we spend a lot of time keeping our hierarchies in sync. What you've done with the Universal Journal is great, but we really think you should go further. And we need you to make this information such that it's very easy to consume in reporting. So this is the kind of big picture about where we want to go. Now, you'll be familiar with some of the things that you see along the bottom. I mean, I doubt there's anybody listening to this that doesn't know what a financial statement version is, has never worked with a cost center group, has never worked with a profit center group. Those are just the standard structures that finance works with. And at the moment, they're in tables, these set tables that have been around forever. And they're used really for two purposes. The one as a basis for reporting. So you've got that tree-like drill down in all the report writer reports, ALF trees and so on. And then, of course, they're also used to help you doing some of the processes, so typically distribution, assessment, settlement. There's all these places where you're using these hierarchies just to give you a grouping of all the production cost centers or all the administration cost centers or all the salary and wage costs, because that's what an easy way of bundling this information for use in the next processes. What we're technically doing now is we're moving in, into this layer, which we call the runtime hierarchy. And the idea is this is taking all those tree structures and putting it into a generic tree structure. At the moment, it's being read in reporting. So you'll find a lot of our reports that show those tree structures, whether it's the trial balance, whether it's a cost center report, a profit center report. They all have those tree structures. They're all typically showing cost center groups and cost element groups or account groups. And all those things are being read from this runtime hierarchy. In the future, we want to be able to use those as well for some of these operational processes, but we're not there yet. And then you'll see two new ideas down the bottom. These are very much work in process. The one is this notion of a universal hierarchy. And the aim here is going to be to bring in some of those generic functions for hierarchies. So things like time dependent hierarchies, things like versioning on hierarchies. Now, those aren't out yet, but it's something we're very definitely working on. And the thing I'd like to introduce you to now is the idea of a flexible hierarchy, which actually won't come as too much as a surprise to some of the CO users. But I think it's going to provide a very useful tool to save you manually building these trees and then assigning your objects to them. So the challenge in a flexible hierarchy, and this is a real customer example, it's not at all uncommon to have 10,000 profit centers. And it's not at all uncommon to have them grouped into 5,000 nodes. And of course, as soon as you start to make an organizational change, that means, on the one hand, working out what's assigned to what a particular profit center, and is it going to be split, merged, retired, whatever. And then working out where in these wretched hierarchies that profit center sits. And it's very time consuming, very error prone. We've been to a lot of our customized customers and had a look at their spreadsheets. People are trying to work with naming conventions as, a, as an extra help. But really, it's pretty complex to keep these hierarchies up to date. And typically, in a lot of cases, people aren't just using one hierarchy. They've got two or three different ways of looking at their organization by tagging the profit centers into different hierarchies. So it might be a functional view, a geographical view, or a product group. And that's part of what drives this very high number of nodes that you need to look at in your hierarchies. So the idea is with these flexible hierarchies is that we actually generate the hierarchy on demand. So the idea is that these nodes, they usually represent something in the business, whether it's a geographical view, a product view, or whatever. And the idea is to do that, I need to have master data attributes. So I need to flag my profit centers as belonging to a particular geography, belonging to a different particular product line, belonging to a particular function. And then I can use that information to build these hierarchies. In fact, the idea is not new. Anybody in CO has actually been doing it for years if you've been doing order summarization or project summarization. There we said long ago, orders and and projects are pretty dynamic. It's actually pretty hard to define those structures up front. So it's maybe better to derive them on the fly based on the fields in the order or the project master data. 
And we're basically doing the same thing here for the cost centers, for the profit centers, and the accounts. The difference is, historically, there isn't a whole lot of master data in a cost center master record or in a, project, a profit center master record. You know, you might be able to summarize by cost center category. You might use some of the fields that get used for reporting, even though they weren't really designed for that, like the telex field or something. But the idea now is that we can use extensibility to extend those cost center and profit center master records so that you can add those extra tags. You can then perform mass changes on the underlying master data. So you're not trying to change the structure of the trees and then drop the single objects into them. You're actually setting up the base data in the cost centers, in the profit centers, in the accounts. So we've, we've got mass change support there. And the idea is that you're going to build the hierarchy based on those attributes. And you're simply just setting up a sequence of attributes that's going to be used to create that hierarchy. So what we see here is you've got the current tag assignment. So this example is from a profit center. You've got the things that everybody knows. So you've got the valid from date, the valid to date, and the segment in that business process, um, in that profit center. And we've added a couple of tags, line of business and product line. And the idea is that I can go in, update those product lines because things have changed. And then I set up the sequence of the hierarchy. So in this particular example, which isn't necessarily realistic, I've said the top node's going to be the country, the next one's going to be the segment, the third one's going to be the line of business, and the fourth one's going to be the product. And I press a button, and I get the hierarchy that I see on the right. So you see the top node is China, Germany, US. That's the country. Then I see the segment, so lose, fuel, and so on and so forth. Then the line of business, and then the product. And that all happened by pressing one button. If you can imagine what it would have meant to maintain that manually, it could be a huge and error-prone effort. It's quite a lot of work and a lot of potential to go wrong. So the idea is, of course, you can take the same tags and generate multiple hierarchies out of them, just depending on the sequence of the tags. And that's the reason we find for a lot of these very large hierarchies with different nodes and so on. But so we're hoping that this will really improve life in the finance department, make it much easier to get to those new hierarchies. Of course, if you like the old way of working where you build your tree and then you assign the individual objects to it, the old transactions are still going to be in there. We've also got some Web Pro applications for maintaining charts of accounts, um, profit center hierarchies, and cost center hierarchies. All of those are still around and are still filling the classic tables. But the idea here is that you're setting up a new, easy to use, easy, much easier to generate approach to your hierarchy maintenance. So you might use the two in parallel, or you might decide going forward that you really only want to work with the flexible hierarchies. Thank you so much, Janet. We appreciate your time. Thank you.